Um, I'd like to come from two angles today. Firstly is my professional point of view um, as a product development manager for Crafty Bits. Um, I'm in charge of design and from a design point of view this book is amazing. Um, in terms of the standards of publishing today um, and artwork, if you look at some of the features of this book, there's no other um, Asonic book available at all. If you look at the artwork, the photography, the layout, um, it really is um, a testament to how... If you look at some of the photography, the way it's laid out, I think the only um, a book right now that's available um, is this book and perhaps ML Magazine which some of the viewers may have seen that's pretty much the only thing that's um, reached the standards of um, British society um, and I myself received it as a gift from my father, um, father on gave it to um, each of us actually as a gift and it was amazing because by the end of Eid we were all looking through it and we were all kind of reading it and sharing different things that we'd read um, and just kind of everyone went to their own section that they were interested in and we were sharing different parts of the book um, with each other. Um, so it's really beautifully laid out in terms of graphics and design and there's nothing like there right now, um, there's nothing out there like this in terms of the standards um, of Western um, civilization, in terms of the books that are available right now um, and in terms of the design. Um, the second angle that I'd like to come from is as a member of the Young Muslims UK um, executive in terms of working with young people um, for quite some time, pretty much since the age of 12, I've been involved in Islamic work um, and Islamic societies in terms of my students' union executive. So uh, we really need this kind of thing because right now in the media, there's so much um, talk about how Muslims are backwards. There's constant um, kind of people. We don't really feel proud of ourselves as young Muslims in the UK. And this kind of thing, it's not just about glorifying ourselves and about feeling good about ourselves, it's about recognizing where we've come from and how much we have to offer to the British society. I think one of the most amazing things about this that Professor Salim and the team have done is that they've not just kept it to our institutions, they've not tried to just target Muslims, it's about what we can give back. Too many young Muslims today and Muslim society in general, um, we just kind of sit on the welfare system and we rely on the government and we complain about what the government can do for us but we should be thinking long term and about the bigger picture because this is our country, it's our society and it's about what we can give back to the people and I think that's really what this book is about because you do need to understand your history to understand where you're going in the future and how you can contribute best um, and I think this book and the project overall um, that's what it's about. I mean my sisters, they're 12 and 10 they went to the exhibition and they were amazed they looked around, they came back, they were so excited they're like, oh wow, you know, we feel really proud to be Muslim and, you know, they came back, they read the book and, you know, they're really excited about it and that's what you need. I mean, today, a lot of Asian parents especially, I mean, probably a lot of viewers, it's as young, especially as an Asian woman, it's kind of like, well, you're going to grow up, you're going to get married, sit down and, you know, have I mean, you learn about all the female scholars. Yes. Um, that's what interested me in this, even when I was looking at the exhibition and stuff, it's about um, how advanced they were and they did go out there in society and they really presented themselves well they really contributed in, you know leaps and bounds and you just don't get that um, especially among Asian society today um, and that, that's the main thing it's kind of feeling proud of our heritage and feeling motivated to contribute in your own way in whatever way you can um, obviously over here is about science and technology but it's you know there's so many areas you can go into arts and law and everything it, you know, it all connects and it's all part of the people. It's very important that they have this book in their home. I think it's an important contribution um, to society and for us to feel proud of ourselves. The uh, authors of book and uh, I am one of the from team of Professor Selim Hassan. I would like to thanks to him and uh, pr preparing this book. Uh, mainly uh, we uh, prepared this book uh, through uh, manuscripts, original manuscripts. And right. uh, original sources we used uh, to prepare these books and all the information in these books uh, very reliable and uh, very uh, important uh, authors contribute to uh, this book and uh, we didn't put any uh, not uh, good uh, information on these books all uh, informations all uh, manuscript uh, pictures miniatures are uh, explain uh, Muslim contribution uh, very well. Quality books should be more than this uh, uh, cost, uh, but it's okay. And this is a big uh, help uh, of uh, foundation to, to students, to scholars, uh, to everyone. And uh, in my uh, opinion, every university, every scholar, every school, every 
uh, library, hospital should have uh, one copy of this book. Yeah. Um, my name is Osman Ali. I'm part of Salford Islamic Society. I work as Vice President Activities Officer in the University of Salford Students' Union. Also a member of Mab Manchester and FOSIS. Uh, being part of a university, um, it was amazing to see in this book that universities as we know it today was first established by Muslims and I doubt many people, uh, many Muslims and non-Muslims at university know about this. The mass production of paper, public libraries which we have at university, the educational waf, uh, waqaf which we have at universities was all invented by Muslims. One thing I found fascinating is by being the chair or the chairperson of Salford Islamic Society and being in charge of all the sports clubs and societies over 60 altogether at Salford, each one has a chairperson. Over a thousand years ago, Muslim schools and universities had study circles where groups of students gathered around a professor who sat on a chair or kursi from which evolved the professional position, the chairperson. Right. And being the chairperson myself of the Islamic society, I found this fascinating to learn from that it all came a thousand years ago from Muslim inventions. Every day I go to university, obviously outside Ramadan, the first thing I do is get coffee. Um, invented in the early 9th century by Muslims again. The taste of coffee did not even get to Europe till the 16th century. Clocks which we use at work, algebra, tr trigonometry which we studied in school, all invented by Muslims. I have to say this book is absolutely amazing. It's a, it's a great insight into our past and heritage. It is a must for everybody and you know people everywhere. Muslims should be reading this in order for them to aspire again to be great like the greats of our past. Um, also, non-Muslims should be, uh, have a copy of this book. It should be everywhere, hospitals, as Muslims invented hospitals. Uh, it's a great, uh, great for non-Muslims in a Dawah sense to build bridges and improve community cohesion. All ISOCs have Islam Awareness Week, Islamic societies that is, and this is an amazing part to do part of the Islam Awareness Week in order for people to know about the great Muslim heritage.